Welcome everybody, my name is Arnav. Thank you for joining me here. Today we're gonna to be building a PC, a 240 FPS PC from scratch from these various parts that we've ordered over the past week on the uh, invention known as the internet. And um, we're gonna be replacing this archaic 60 FPS console we have there with you know, a higher tech machine. And uh, we're gonna be learning together how to build a PC from scratch. And I'm gonna be showing you step by step how uh, I'm going to go about it. So for a CPU, we have the Intel Core i9-9900K processor and CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. And if we were to look at a computer as some living organism, the processor is akin to a brain. So CPU sits in a socket on the main circuit board like such. And it takes an information and instruction and essentially directs the rest of the programs that are in our system's memory. So whether we want to transfer documents or tell our Fortnite character to drink his potion, the processor will take in our command and direct the hard drive to transfer or the GPU to render in that our character needs to drink his potion. And we'll talk about GPUs later. So the five gigahertz maximum turbo uh, speed we have here is the maximum clock speed with this processor. And this essentially is the speed with which the CPU can retrieve and interpret instruction. So in applications, you'll find that they'll become smoother, snappier, and more efficient with this type of clock speed. And this will help lead to higher frames in gaming as well. So our processor here is eight cores. And the purpose of a multi-core setup in general is that if you were doing heavy time consuming workloads in a PC, this will be more efficient and more manageable. Another important concept is that of multi-threading. Multi-threading capabilities will enhance performance when you're kind of undertaking a heavy multitasking load, uh, like gaming, streaming, and video editing at the same time, if you have an appetite for all of those, of course. The CPU install process is actually pretty straightforward. You'll want to go to the north end of your motherboard and find the socket as such. And you'll want to slide in the CPU into the socket and just pop it in place gently. And if you need to apply some force, that's okay too. For our SSD here, we have the Samsung 970 EVO. And this gives us one terabyte of capacity for various downloads. And generally in an SSD, you'll want competitive read write speeds to help load data from storage faster. And also to make it easier to load into a competitive uh, battle royale games such as Fortnite or Warzone, where you wouldn't want your Spawn times affected. The read write speeds also help reduce the possibility of having momentary freezes in games as there's no delay in data uh, loading in from the hard drive. And the SSD as an inherent function isn't really made to help improve your frame or picture quality, but it'll be useful in loading your OS as well, whether that be Windows or something else. So to actually install the SSD, you'll want to find the heatsink right under the CPU and unscrew it, open it up, slide in the SSD into place, make sure it's locked, and then put the screws back on to keep it locked. Of course, you're gonna need some sort of internal cooling system within the PC. And here we're gonna be running the Corsair H100i, which comes with a radiator, two fans, RGB lighting, and most importantly, the pump itself. So I've taken the liberty here to sort of screw on the fans to the radiator, uh, which we are then going to attach to our radiator plate, which comes with the PC case. And then we're gonna mount this to the side of the PC. So basically how this is gonna work is we're gonna screw the pump on top of the CPU here, and the back plate behind the motherboard is gonna help support and lock the pump in place. And this pump will effectively regulate the temperature of the processor, and the fans will work in conjunction to help support circulation as well as general temperature. So this is actually the pump that comes with the cooling system. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this and basically stick it right on the CPU itself. And as you can see here, there's a bit of thermal paste uh, at the bottom of this pump. And how that's gonna help us is it will help transfer heat and increase the conductivity between the surface of the CPU and um, the pump itself. So quick chemistry 101. So for memory, we have the Corsair RGB Pro, and this is going to give us 32 gigs of memory across two sticks. 
RAM stands for random memory access, and this stores the amount of information your PC will need to access in any given moment. So for example, when you open a program, the OS will store it as RAM temporarily, and 3200 RAM will make it so that we can run several apps simultaneously and so that our computer won't actually slow at all. And as it pertains to gaming, RAM is crucial because your PC will need to pull information stored on the drive you know, relatively quickly and high RAM will help protect you from choppy frame rates as well as from poor performance. RGB lighting is a nice touch as well and can be managed if we download the Corsair IQ software. So in terms of installing memory sticks themselves, if you look to the right hand side of the CPU, you'll find the four inserts uh, for the memory sticks. And if you have only two memory sticks, as I do, it's actually best to insert them in A2 and B2. And I learned this later on and uh, I fixed it towards the end of the video. You'll eventually want to install the motherboard into the PC case itself. And if you look at the orientation here, you'll want all of the ports facing out of the socket within the PC case like this. So for our power supply unit, we're going to be running the EVGA Supernova 850 watts. And this is the internal infrastructure that's going to help run our whole operation here in the first place. One of the more important traits in building a PC, particularly for gaming, is having a modular function. So modular just means you'll have the flexibility to plug and unplug wires as you need and don't need them. And you aren't restricted to the wires that, you know, just come with a unit. And this helps to maximize efficiency in terms of spacing and cable management. And in the long run will help improve airflow as well. And generally most power supply units will have a slot for them in the PC case off to the side and to the bottom, just like this. So I will show how I personally wired my own PC, but I thought it'd be more generally helpful to speak on the function of the cables within the PSU themselves. First off, we have the motherboard modular connector, which is a 24 pin cable going from the PSU to the east side of the motherboard near our memory sticks. Then we'll have an eight pin connector, which is also necessary to power our motherboard. And this flows to the top left of our motherboard. The eight pin and the 24 pin connections will be mostly sufficient in powering a lot of PCs. However, for high powered processing chips, such as the Intel chip that we're using, it's helpful to actually plug it in an additional four pin cable to make our performance more optimal. The VGA connector is what will make our graphics card and GPUs run in the first place. So for a GPU like the RTX 2080 Ti that we're using, we'll have the pleasure of putting both 8-pin cables in, so we'll have to use two VGA ports for this in the power supply unit. We can thank Mr. Jensen Huang from NVIDIA for pioneering this type of graphics system that we have today. The SATA connectors here are primarily used to connect to LED strips as well as to the Corsair RGB cooling system. And on the topic of modularity again, I didn't have a use for the perf one or the FTD connector, so I opted not to use them or the respective Molex cables. Okay, so this next part is really important. This is the GPU, otherwise known as the graphics processing unit. And what we're using here today is the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. And this will impact everything from the resolution on the displays that we have open to the refresh rates and frames on those displays. And the technology behind this is actually Nvidia's Turing architecture named after Alan Turing. And overall, this technology helps provide and produce really just special intricate details and image quality, including in shadows, reflection, and in lighting, and almost offers the kind of resolution that we'll see in, you know, a lot of the great movies of today. EVGA is an authorized partner for NVIDIA, and NVIDIA actually helps develop the graphics chips that go inside here. So yeah, the 2080 is the best in class today. The install process for the GPU is actually relatively straightforward. Just place it within the PCIe slot under the CPU and uh, off to the left hand side, you'll see that there are panels where you can screw in and uh, attach the GPU to the PC case. And now 
Since we've generally explained how the wiring functions from a power supply unit standpoint, I'll fast forward along here and show you how I wired the PC. And if you made it this far, thank you very much, first off, and congratulations, second off. And I ask kindly that you please stay tuned for a special message from me in the end. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully we were all able to learn something together. You know, I never personally had an attention span to watch a screw by screw tutorial on YouTube on how to do this thing. So hopefully you were able to appreciate that I spent more time talking about the importance of certain parts and their functions uh, relative to the PC as well as the conceptual links that govern all of them. I do not purport to be a computer whiz by any means. In fact, I've actually had more success breaking computers than building them. And if you saw the remains of my 2011 MacBook Pro, which I dropped off the top bunk of my UCLA um, dorm room freshman year, you'd probably agree. And you know, I've had some time over the past couple of months of quarantine this year to learn about some of the innovation that I hadn't really had a chance to dive fully into when I was still in school. And of course, one of the great advancements of this century, aside from general advancement in health and medicine has been the evolution of the power of computing, whether that be uh, as it relates to general productivity, supercomputing as we have in Washington DC, or for more recently, gaming and esports. And I was actually recently watching Jensen Huang's talk at Oregon State University with his fellow Beavers. And even he mentioned during his talk that he was so surprised and he couldn't have predicted how capably we would be challenging Moore's Law. And of course, Mr. Huang is one of the leading pioneers and visionaries in the field of graphics and gaming. And, you know, I was just thinking, whoever took Mr. Huang's company public in, you know, late 1990s was probably a visionary himself because, you know, video games hadn't been out then. So how could you have seen the future of graphics? I've learned that the best way to actually learn and grow is to take a deep dive and throw yourself into parts of the world with which you're not really comfortable or fluent. Now this principle can refer to applications of almost anything. And this includes throwing yourself into the deep end of the world of Farmville and Facebook to achieve super master level in order to win the IPO. Generally, if you're someone that wants to sit at the juncture of innovation, the only prerequisites you need are a peak interest in something, learning something, and a lifelong commitment to the art of learning. And I think if you have those, you can generally figure out most things along the way. And thank you again for watching this video.